Hey there, happy Friday! Tonight we are continuing on the pumpkin embroidery here. So uh, thank you for joining me here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time and it's a time that we can relax and craft together. All right, you guys, continuing on the pumpkin embroidery tonight. I'm hoping we can finish up uh, the whole crown here. Uh, and then tomorrow, Saturday, we will be doing a special Saturday stitch along uh, at 11 a.m. Central Time, where we will finish this guy up and we will also be stitching the cute little baddie bat. So both of these are uh, our Embroidery of the Month bundles. So they're available at penguinandfish.com right now. So there's time to download uh, download them and stitch along with me uh, tonight and tomorrow yet. We'll finish them up. I'll also be showing you how to take off that stick and stitch stabilizer, which is that sticker that we've printed the pattern on and then uh, um, are stitching right through here. So I'll show you how to do that as well. So, all right, guys, let's get stitching. All right. Hello, hello, everyone. Popping in. All right. This is our tea towel. So we are stitching this onto like a kitchen tea towel. And uh, over here I have the iPad with uh, my stitch and color guide on. So here again is what stitches to do and what colors to make them. So I'm gonna have this open, uh, open next to me here while we stitch and I can just keep looking back over at that. All right, let's get down here a bit lower. Can get into this then. All right, so uh, I wanted to finish this crown area tonight. Last night we learned how to do the satin stitch and French knots, and now I just want to crank out this top. At this point, we've learned all the stitches, and I just want to keep going. So it looks like we ended up here. We ran out of yellow thread, so I have another piece of that all ready to go here. Let's start there for the night. Let's just kind of, I don't know, work our, from this way over, maybe. That seems like a decent enough plan at this point. I am still using the thread conditioner. This helps avoid twists and frankly, it just smells really yummy. <laughs> it just feels good to use it on, uh, you know, a Friday evening here. All right, so I don't have to start with that away knot. I can just start stitching because I can weave into the ends. Oh, this is much easier if I snip the end so I got like a nice clean edge. Then it'll be a bit easier to get the thread through the needle. All right, there we are. Hope all is well with everyone. If you ordered from me today, it is it is a uh, shipped, so you should get uh, get your stuff soon. But there are there are more bundles of these going out, so we got the bundles. Oh, <laughs> John is John is here. Yep, John's over in the YouTube. My husband he pops in every once in a while. All right, let's get these lazy daisies and then finish up the last couple chain stitches. There's, or uh, back stitches, I mean. So, you know, I just said that we're gonna work from this side over, but I'm realizing that I'm gonna have a lot of this yellow left over and there's only one more yellow thing to do and that's this frond over here. So I'll probably jump back over there and do that frond. Oh, cool. Tracy says, I finished my embroidery and I'm working on a pom-pom rug. You know, I was, I've been thinking about pom-pom so much lately. It's just so silly. Oh, first of all, I do have the pom-pom makers back in the shop now. Uh, we, we sold out of them, but now, now they're back. Um, but I've been staring at this, 
just, I don't know, glass container, glass jar that I had been putting like selvages and just kind of skinny strips of thread in, not thread, skinny strips of fabric, like just, you know, little edges that I cut off and that sort of thing. And I've been walking past it every day and I'm like, in my head, I guess I don't even know what I planned on doing with them. I just had them and just in case for something like they're too little to sew together. I figured maybe I'll tie them together and weave them or something at some point. But uh, now I keep walking past them and I want to turn them into pom poms. So I think I might do that. I might I might break that out and um, just make a whole pile. Uh, probably wouldn't be a whole pile, but make some fabric pom poms. So we did that in one of uh, when I when I did that pom pom maker how to a couple of weeks ago I did one that was all all fabric and ugh, that just turned out so much cooler uh, than I was thinking not that I was thinking anything but I was pleasantly surprised with that so now I kind of want to do more of that so I, I might might dedicate those little scraps to that. All right, so that's that's it. We're finished with that guy. We had him halfway done already. So I'm just going to weave in the end, and uh, then I think I am going to jump to the other side. And Actually, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm going to wait. Normally, I would just jump to the other side and do that other frond, but since we're trying to keep the back extra clean, I am not doing big jumps and I want to weave in the ends when I can uh, to something close by. And uh, if not, I have to do an away knot again where I reserve thread to weave in later. And since this is so far away... Oh, wait, maybe not. Look, I can weave into the end here. I was thinking I'd have to do an away knot for this guy because there's nothing near it. But we got this orange near it. So, okay, I am going to keep going then. Let's weave in that end. Ooh, good. That was a good discovery. Then we can start up that other frond and just be done. Get it done. So I, I'm hoping to get this. I'm hoping to get the crown done tonight. And really, there's not much more to do, so maybe we can even get more than that done, which would be even better. Um, Kathy's asking on Facebook if I make the fabric ones the same way as the thread ones, the pom-poms. And yeah, I'm making them the exact same way. I think the only difference is that that center thread that you have to put through to hold the whole thing together, I think... I will try and find some, like, cotton thread or something to use for that. I, I'm not going to put fabric through um, as my center thread thing. Um, so I'll have to find something for that. And that's really the only difference. I try and use, when I'm making a pom-pom, I try and just use the same um, yarn or thread that I'm using, but that wouldn't work with, with um, fabric, I don't think. Oh, hello, Jadira. Thanks for joining. Oh, you're new to embroidery. Well, we do tons of embroidery here for sure. And if you ever have any questions, let me know. We can go over it. We've For this piece, we've already gone over the different stitches that we used uh, in the past couple days. So we've been working on this project for the whole week. And got this far, so I'm doing this whole thing um, live with you guys. So I do go over how to do those stitches and how to get started with this in some of the earlier videos from this week. So you can check out those. All right. We're going to have just enough floss again, I think, to finish this guy. That's always fun when we win thread trick chicken. I'm going to get just a little high. 
fire, you guys. I keep thinking I'm gonna punch that with my hand. All right, I'm gonna get this back stitch here. I'm kind of trading off the back stitches and the lazy daisy stitches here. Oh, thanks so much, Jadira. That's really sweet. All right, last couple stitches and then this is it for oh no I lied uh, I was gonna say this is it for the yellow but it's not we have um some of these petals around the eyes are yellow as well so all of that will do tomorrow unless we do get this done extra fast today but I suspect we will just get this crown done and then we can do uh, the face tomorrow during our Saturday Saturday stitch along. All right, there it is. That's our last little little frond. So let's weave in the ends there. Then I think I'll go back to the other side just because that's where I was and we'll still go from right to left I think for no real reason other than it'll feel like we can track getting stuff done <laughs> for the night I guess. Ooh, this is tight. There we go. Last little weave-in. It's still looking pretty clean and good on the back. I'm really excited about that. Again, uh, this will be seen. Oh, someone was asking uh, earlier, or I think uh, someone emailed me. I will, I think, I think um, maybe Paula did. I'll have to email her back, but... Uh, I am not putting any backing on this when I'm done. I think the weaving in the ends that three times, even this going through the wash, that is probably going to be perfectly fine. And um, this shouldn't really get damaged or come out or anything. Like I'm not, um, even with like kind of heavy use, I wouldn't worry too much. It's going to wear. I mean, it's still fabric, like cotton, um, cotton thread, and that's going to wear over time, but not any more than the actual towel. So I'm, I'm not worried about this going through the wash. Okay, um, I'm headed back here. I thought I would do this little blue squiggle there. This is, I think, the only blue left in the crown. So let's do that, and then we'll get like this little um, satin stitch guy. Yeah, and then keep going with the rest. All right, let's use our thread gloss again. Oh, so Gina's asking, did my mom teach me to embroider and what age? Mm, well, this is how my memory goes. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe she, maybe she did. But in my head, how it went was, uh, I had a babysitter that came over whenever one has a babysitter over. I guess I'm not quite sure what the age is, like maybe five. I don't know. Um had a babysitter come over and she had a cross stitch. And I remember just totally mesmerized watching her cross stitch, like the idea that there's nothing there except for like the fabric and then just like filling in each little square. And then all of a sudden you have like this picture. I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Um, just so interesting. I'm gonna weave in the ends right here. Uh, so I remember at some point getting like a little cross stitch after, after that, uh, from, from Joanne's, like probably, you know, like a little Christmas ornament. Joanne's has a much better selection of <laughs> embroidery kits and, uh, now <laughs> a little, uh, partial to that, but, uh, so I got like these little cross stitches and that's kind of what got me into it. So if you consider cross stitch part of the embroidery family, which, which I do, then that's, that's kind of when I started. I, I can't quite place when I actually started embroidery. Like I know 
I, you know, like in theory, I must have been doing it before I started making the pattern since I knew the stitches and <laughs> kind of knew what I was doing. So in theory, there was embroidery in my life, but uh, I started, you know, kind of more of the penguin and fish stuff. Oh yeah, Colleen says, yep, Joanne, uh, Joanne does because uh, Joanne carries a bunch of our patterns and our... Joanne's carries our penguin and fish kits there. <laughs> so that's that's why I think Joanne's has uh, better patterns there now. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I started drawing more, and this is like after college, really. And uh, I was making stuffed animals after college and, and selling them on Etsy, which was fun. I, I liked doing that, but um, I felt like I wasn't drawing as much, so I started drawing again, but I still wanted it to be crafty, and that's when I started to make embroidery patterns, because it combined like drawing and tangible, physical, crafty uh, stuff at the same time. So I just thought embroidery would be fit really well for that, and I knew I liked it meaning I must have done it before, but I just, like, in my head, I can't place an actual embroidery. I do, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, and but I don't remember this, but I do have, I do have an embroidery that I did. I know it was from elementary school art class because my brother has one, too, <laughs> that he made. That's the same thing. Uh, but it's a tulip on burlap, and I know I was six because I put the number six on one side of the tulip, and I try to do the mirror image of a six on the other side, and that one looks pretty wonky. But based on that, I knew I was six for for that embroidery. But I knew I have done, like, more embroidery. I do remember um, doing a lot of beading and bead embroidery. Um like indigenous style <laughs> bead embroidery on leather and with seed beads and stuff, which would be really kind of fun to do. Uh, I was very much into that. So that's, that's sort of an embroidery bead embroidery. I know I was doing this sort of stuff though, but I literally cannot place, place this <laughs> per se, this style of embroidery. But yeah, I remember doing cross stitches. I remember doing the bead embroidery, bead bracelets. But not this kind per se, even though I know it must have happened. So that's that. Not really an answer, I suppose. Oh, Karen says uh, that mom taught us girls to embroider oh, tea towels and pillowcases. Yep, that was definitely, definitely popular. Oh, could I get closer? Yep, so here we go. Uh, I am... Uh, Rebecca asked if I could get closer, and maybe I'm not close on the thing that you wanted to see. So if there's a, a stitch you want to see again, just let me know. I am upside down here, holding, holding it upside down, just because it's the most comfortable in my hand. I do like feeling the threads with my, with my left hand, so over here, I'm actually feeling every single thread come in and out of the fabric. So I like holding the hoop in a way where I can get my left hand like positioned where I can feel the stitches. So that's, that's kind of my main reason for moving. So if I'm going to the back, I'm literally like, here's my needle uh, in my, my left hand in between these fingers. And I'm pulling it up and I'm feeling it go through my fingers. I'm actually physically putting my finger there. And I can tell if any knots are coming or any of that because I can, because I'm touching it. So I like to kind of call it like my third third eye on the back of back of the piece there. Who Christy says that her aunt Rosalie taught taught her when she was ten. Fun. So I learned to, I think, kind of knit and crochet from my grandma. 
Although my mom might tell a totally different story. She might say like, oh, I showed you how to do this and that or whatever. But like (laughs) in my brain, um, in my brain, my babysitter came over and had that cross stitch. And uh, I think for knitting, we were at a friend's house and my friend's mom kind of showed me how to knit and then you know I did a lot more later mom showed me how to do the continental style knitting all right this is it for this blue looks so pretty on the back so the back of a back stitch if you see this the back of a back stitch uh, looks like the front of a stem stitch really so this looks like a stem stitch well it is a stem stitch they're like opposite. So here it looks like, um, so the back of the stem stitch looks like a back stitch (laughs) and the back of the back stitch looks like a stem stitch. So that's kind of fun. Makes this guy look extra pretty on the back. One, two, one more. And I know my grandma did tons of crochet. So I think, I think I must've learned at least in some portion from her. I feel like maybe my mom introduced me to a lot of that stuff, but then maybe uh, I dug into it more and then learned more from like grandma or someone else. I'm not quite sure. (laughs) I'm going to have to find out now. I feel like I'm going to feel super bad if she taught me how to do all that stuff and I don't remember. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right, I'm going to do this little satin stitch. It's going to be just like these guys. I um, We just ran out of thread, so I'm going to do that guy there. Um, I think I may have... This This will be just enough thread. Great. I am going to use a thread conditioner. I'm sort of addicted to this now, I suppose. Amy says that my mom... On YouTube, my mom taught me um, to knit... I'm self-taught crochet and embroidery, plastic canvas, cruel, and cross-stitch. That's awesome. My mom definitely taught me to quilt, though. Um, She got into quilting after 9-11 and uh, took classes and stuff like that. And then after she had been doing it for, I don't know, a couple of years, then... um, I took a class at the same place that she did and and worked on some with her and and that sort of thing. So quilting for sure is clearly my mom. (laughs) I'm going to get that little satin stitch. I'm kind of weaving a lot into these ends. They're getting a little tough to weave into, but we're doing the best we can. Colleen says, self-taught crochet. Oh, God. Uh, one of my favorite things to do, this is so silly. Okay, but I love knitting those washcloths out of, um, knitting washcloths out of that, oh, gosh, what's it called? Like that sugar and, sugar and cream? Is that what it is? That, that, um, that cotton, that 100% cotton yarn, right? Sugar, sugar and cream, sugar and cream. Let me know. I'm sure someone here knows what I'm talking about. Uh, but I I love knitting washcloths out of that. It is the perfect size. Um, I love doing it the way we kind of um, we kind of talked about. Or we we I showed you my pattern that I like using here before. We should do that again sometime. But. I like doing it where you start with hardly anything and then you increase to, you know, however you want the diagonal and then you decrease. That's, that's the kind I like doing. And I, my grandma and grandpa lived on a farm and I remember we were there, like there, we were staying there, they were babysitting or something. And I just wanted to like knit all these. So I, I had gotten a bunch of these balls, these sugar and cream or whatever the heck they're called. Oh, sugars and cream. Okay. Amy says that it's sugars and cream. Yeah. Uh, and my favorite thing to do would was, and if I was, 
I want to do this now. Like, this is making me excited. But, like, I, I want to, like, uh, my favorite thing to do was to take the ball of yarn. You know, I'd start knitting. And then I'd take the ball of yarn and throw it as far as I could. <laughs> or just throw it down the stairs. But if I was knitting outside, I would throw it as far as I could outside. And then I would just knit up to the ball. <laughs> I would just go slowly, like walk slowly until I knit all the way up to the ball. And uh, that makes me sound like a crazy person. But I feel like if I can say that anywhere, <laughs> I can say it here. Oh, sugar and cream. That's what it is. It's got that little apostrophe in there. That's right. Sugar and cream. Ugh. Okay, I'm going to put one more on this side because it doesn't look very round. I'm going to add like one more shorter, shorter one here. I would so do that right now. It sounds, oh, it's just so satisfying. And I remember like those sugar and cream uh, balls of yarn, I could get one and a half out of, one and a half dishcloths out of those. So I would have tons of, you know, dishcloths that were all the same color and then, you know, throughout the one dishcloth. And then I'd have a whole pile that were halvesies because I could just get, um, I could get one and a half out of them. Oh, cool. Amy says, I wrote a pattern for my mom doing dishcloths. That's awesome. All right. There we go. Little, um, little dot in there. I think those add like a really fun touch here. All right. I am going to stitch the little stem and I'm realizing that we are doing a new color here. I haven't done this color yet in, in this piece. So this is, this is, uh, some of my pocket skeins. This is, uh, the tiger lily color. Let's, this is the last, last only color we haven't used yet. All right, let's get my yeah, 24 inches or so. There's, more of this oh no there's not oh yeah there's more co of this color in the face the french knots in the face are this color but most of the decorations uh, mostly the key piece with um this orange is this leaf here is going to be this orange this tiger lily color all right so i'm just uh, grabbing this is the six strand embroidery floss and i'm just going to grab that one strand and pull it out and it's going to go crazy behind but um it actually doesn't get in a knot or anything. It's it's awesome doing it this way. It seems silly and like it takes forever, but compared to um, pulling three strands apart like that, where it can tangle and get caught, and if it wraps up on itself, then you have a huge mess. This is way easier. Just pulling um, the individual threads. You can't pull more than one at once, otherwise it'll it won't pull out easily. But um, just pulling it out one at a time. I'm just gonna run my hand through it. And let's use more of, oh, I'm, I'm using this rainfall one tonight. Actually, let's get the third one. So these are these are those thread conditioners from Wisecraft Handmade. I've been using them. I think they're super fun. Uh, here's the last flavor that she has. So the Huga is kind of like a, like a pear flavored. The rainfall, I think it's like a Christmas, like pine needle like a sweet pine needle and then the earl gray let's let's um let's use that one for a little while oh this one's just kind of dry and earthy oh this one's good too i haven't used this one in a while but she um blair who makes these or who sells them uh, for Wisecraft Handmade, she hadn't been selling them for a while because she was moving, but I believe, believe she's, uh, got them available again. Got a little fuzzle stuck on there. All right, let's thread this guy and we'll weave into some ends and we'll do this little stem. And if I have some left over, I, I will jump over here and use the rest of rest of this color. All right, let's weave into this blue here, I think. 
still looking pretty on the back. My goal, um, again, just to say it again, my goal is to have this back look nice too. I'm trying to not jump around a whole lot or at all really on, on the back of this because it's a tea towel, meaning um, the back will be seen in theory if someone turns the towel around. So at first glance, it'd be awesome if it still still looked like the front. And obviously it, it won't. I mean, these stitches don't look like the stitches on the front, but from far away, you'll get the idea of it still. The biggest idea is that I don't have jumps all over the place. There's nothing to like catch my finger on. Uh, except for these are kind of big stitches, but oh well. All right, let's do, I'm doing this little bit in here. It's just basically a lighter orange, a yellower, lighter orange than, than the California poppy color. And I'm just doing the back stitch again. Oh, Karen's asking what brand of embroidery floss I'm using. This is um, my new embroidery floss. So I got a bunch of floss manufactured. So they're, they're my pocket skein embroidery uh, flosses. So it's, it's from Penguin and Fish. It's, on, it's only on the Penguin and Fish website right now. Um, but they're half skeins. That's, that's what's kind of different with them. It's still six skein, six strand embroidery floss. It's a hundred percent cotton, Egyptian cotton embroidery floss. You know that you can separate and and do stuff with yet. Uh, but instead of them being eight meter skeins, which is the typical skein amount, they're just four meters. So they're perfect for like little projects. Um, they're perfect for keeping with projects and stuff too which is what I like doing. I just keep the, the colors with the project. Ooh, cantaloupe. That'd be a good color for a, um, a color or a floss color. Amy said, tiger lily reminds me of cantaloupe. Actually, I, I feel like I have, I have a color called you're a peach, which when you said cantaloupe, that kind of reminds me of it. Let's see. I have my uh, fabric only scissors here, or scissors, my um, floss. Is this the your peach color? Oh, I might not have any in here. This is just kind of like a random sampling. Oh, I don't have, I don't have your peach in there. Oh well. But the your peach, I think, um, is very cantaloupe-y. Maybe if, if I did a your, like the your peach color, but a little pinkier, that would be kind of a fun one to name cantaloupe. That's just a fun word. Oh yes, Karen says on YouTube, beautiful, vibrant colors. So this is a hint of some things that we're going to be doing soon. Um, but I, me and um, Jenna, who works with me, she's, we are kind of curating some smaller little color combos because, uh, you know, the, this made me think of it, the vibrant colors. So it's so fun. It, it, like putting different colors next to each other, just like changes them totally. I feel like, you know, so you put like, you know, these three colors together and then all of a sudden you have like this beautiful, like sweet little palette or you put these colors together and now you have like this rich earthy palette and then you have like these colors and then it's a bright rainbow. It has been, it's been so fun to kind of see different color combinations. So we're putting together a few little kind of mini curated collections of our pocket skeins. So if you didn't want to get the whole collection, um, the collection has 23 skeins. So if you didn't want the whole collection, then we have, we're going to have like these little itty bitty palette add-ons, um, that I think, I think are going to be really fun. We're excited about them. 
So stay tuned for that coming up. We're working on that right now. Rebecca's wondering if it's chilly in Minnesota. It was cooler than I thought it was going to be today. Uh, it is... It was, I mean, like, it's still not bad at all. I mean, it's, it's, it was low 50s in the morning. It was actually like 48 when I drove to the office, to the warehouse today. And then it was like 61 when I left. So cool. I wore a scarf and a sweater, uh, but we had the door open all day. The garage door at the warehouse open all day, just letting in fresh air. And, ugh, the sky couldn't have been more blue and it was still and beautiful out it was definitely crisp though it was a it was just like a gorgeous late summer early fall day uh, on the way home i noticed that some of the leaves were starting to turn colors so uh, some of the trees were turning a little yellow actually kind of like this tiger lily color really and uh, ugh, it was beautiful but yeah i hope it's like that tomorrow that would be nice go for a little morning walk or something i didn't have my i didn't have my coat on so uh, it wasn't it wasn't there yet although i have worn it <laughs> having my scarf on was nice because then i felt at least like i had a little blankie on all right i'm just weaving in this end done with with um that little i don't know stem i guess you'd call it right pumpkin stem. So I still have a pile of this tiger lily color. I think I am just going to come over here and use it up on, on the leaf because um, the leaf has that color yet. So here, here we're coming. We're still kind of working this way over. Um, so after I run out of floss, I'll come back and do, well, maybe I'll just continue on this leaf because I do have that other half of the thread here. So it'd be kind of silly to just stop so okay we're gonna just finish this leaf then we're going gonna go back to this leaf and then we still have that little satin stitch guy up there we're missing one little berry over there yet all right i'm gonna weave in this little green part here this looks like it's closest to my starting point Oh, <laughs> Amy, I, I'm reading a comment from Amy on, on YouTube, and I had to read it like th three times. I get it now. <laughs> uh, she said, my husband always says, cantaloupe tonight, Pop's got the truck. <laughs> I had to read that. Maybe I only read it twice, but still, that was one too many times to get the joke. <laughs> I, think I, I think I had to say it out loud. I think, though, next week it is supposed to get almost to 90 degrees again by Friday. So we are not completely done with, uh, with summer yet. False fall, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> yep. Amy says it's a verbal. Glad, glad you got it. Yeah, I had to kind of whisper it to myself out loud, and then I'm like, oh, duh. <laughs> Cute. All right, so just rotating again so my left hand can feel all the stitches come through easily. Uh, this is probably small enough that I could have done in one big stitch, but there's a slight curve to it, so I'm going to split it up into two stitches. So I'm trying to map this out in my head. 
because we got these these lines down the middle here and I'm trying to map like okay should I do that line first I could do that line and then come back up this way and then finish these but then what if I run out before then or I could just go down here and then up but so I'm I'm not quite sure I'm not quite sure what to do I think I'm just gonna I don't know how much thread do I have left I think I'm gonna just keep going around the outside I guess I'm always trying to I'm always trying to map out my area like I'm trying to map out the direction I'm gonna go with my stitches and in theory, my goal is like the least amount of jumping around. Like, where's the, like, you know, like I can go down here and I can just make this little leap here and get over here or whatever versus like jumping from here all the way to here or here all the way to there. I'm trying to always kind of calculate what the shortest route is. Uh, but sometimes it doesn't always work out perfect and I'm almost out of thread. So I'm going to just keep going around the outside. Actually, I might keep going around the outside here and maybe I'll get at least over here and then I can start here, go down and up and then continue and then go down and then finish up this way. Ah, I like that. Okay, that's our plan. This little, this, having this leaf done will make it feel like we did a lot, I think. Definitely running low on the thread. So I'm, I'm using this stabbing method. I'm sure you've noticed that this is my go-to method, but you could do the sewing method yet where you go in and out in the same, same motion, but I, I definitely still prefer the stabbing motion just because I think I can get more exact stitches. Getting there. And we already have that next piece ready to go. Next piece of thread. I might be able to get up to this point, but I think I'm not gonna get quite there, which is fine. The way that we mapped it out um, will get me back up here. I'm gonna try and get that last stitch. Let's do it. All right, good enough. Let's weave in that end. Still looking nice on the back. That makes me happy. And this weaving back and forth three times should get it so they don't, it doesn't unravel in the wash. Snip. Okay, and then I do have this next piece here. Let's just run it through the thread conditioner. There we go. I'm excited to stitch tomorrow. Um, if you didn't hear or didn't get my email, uh, I am going to be doing a Saturday stitch along tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central Time. I know that doesn't quite work for everyone. Um, but hopefully, hopefully you guys, if you know, need some chill time sometime Saturday, you can pop on in. Uh, it'll be several hours, so it's going to be longer than, than these this nightly thing. We're usually here for about an hour in the evenings. And... Uh, the Saturday one will be just till we get it all done. I suspect it might be three or four hours because <laughs> we, we need to stitch all of, all of the face yet. I want to stitch up. I wa also want to stitch up this guy. He'll take, 
probably an hour and a half or so, if I'm just guessing off the top of my head. And uh, then I still want to take the, the stick and stitch off of both of them. So that'll take, you know, at least a half hour as well. All right, I'm going to start right here and then I'm going to stitch down uh, the vein of that leaf and then stitch up the vein of this leaf, then continue on the outside and then, then get done here. Yep, that's the plan. So weaving in to the top of this point here. It smells good. All right. Let's stitch down that edge. And feel free to, if you, if you don't want to use the back stitch on this, I mean, this would look very pretty in the stem stitch or chain stitch, any of these other stitches we've been doing as well. Okay, I gotta make this thread a little bit shorter. I'm pulling my shoulder way too far. You don't wanna pull your arm all the way out, like as far as you can reach when you do embroidery. The less movement, the better, the less repetitive stress at least. this direction. All right, so I'm going to just jump over to the start of this next vein and we will go up and then we'll just start where we left off on the outside. I'm hoping this will get me the entire way around the thread I'm using. We'll have to remember to stretch and do all that stuff tomorrow. Ooh, I'll have to have some coffee. Yay, I like Saturday stitch along, so I'll have my coffee and it'll be sunny here. That'll be nice. I can have the, the windows open a little bit maybe, at least the shades open. If I had the shades open now, the neighbors would be walking like, what the heck are they doing in there? Because I got all these bright lights on and just blasting in the dining room here. <laughs> so it, 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 it'd, be, it'd be a sight, I think. Yes, tomorrow will be early enough to have that coffee, Amy says. Yes. Oh, yum. I can, I'm imagining the smell. Yum. Okay, that's, that's making me happy. <laughs> Ugh. Hot, hot coffee. I was just thinking it's not going to be much nicer than having some hot coffee and getting to stitch some embroidery. But then I was like, ugh, except for those don't mix that well if they, if you dump coffee on your embroidery or something. Ooh, I do like pepper. Amy says I like peppermint tea. I do like peppermint tea. And... Uh, I was on a stint for a while where I'd have that before going to bed or like in the evenings because at least it's still like a warm, yummy drink. But in the end, it just, it's just not, it's just a coffee replacement for me, which makes it not as bad or not as good. Oh, and John, uh, I missed who said that, but uh, they said that John can, um, when I need bathroom breaks tomorrow, John can come stitch. <laughs> he would. 
That'd be kind of fun. He has stitched, um, he's stitched some of my embroidery kits before. He stitched the giraffe kit. And he stitched his own little tree and leaves. So he added, he added to the kit. And, um, he stitched the craft a happy life embroidery. Those might be the only two that he, that he stitched. Ooh, Luann says she's getting a fruit and vegetable delivery tomorrow. You know, we are going to need that real soon here, too. Ran out of salad stuff. Although I think the garden still has edible kale. I don't think it's all gone yet or frozen or whatever yet. So maybe we should just pick some kale and then, then we'd be good on the lettuce for a little bit. All right, I think I'm going to continue on the outside. And then we'll jump here and try and come back that side. Although we are going to be playing some thread chicken to do that, which is a bummer because I would have to start a whole new thread. But although tomorrow we have more of this, more of this color to do. So I'm going to have to cut thread, more thread anyway. So I guess it's not the end of the world <laughs> if I have to cut another piece of floss. So I don't think we're going to quite get done tonight here. I think, uh, let's see, I think we'll try and finish this leaf and maybe I'll try and squeeze in this other little satin stitch berry, but I don't think we're going to get this other leaf over here done. So we'll start there tomorrow. We'll start with that leaf and then we'll just work on, on this guy's face a bit. See how that goes. I think that actually might take some time. There's a lot of details, a lot of details in the face. Oh, that's right. Linda, you're absolutely right. Lin um, John also made the koala. You are absolutely right. He did make the koala. He did a nice job. He did that during our during our stitch along. He was in the other room watching and watching us all stitch it together, and um, he stitched his own. That was fun. I'm putting together the text for for the label for that. So I will, when I get that done, I'm, I'm totally basing it on a lot of the stuff that you guys mentioned would be good to have on the koala quilt label. So I will, when I'm done with the text, I will post it in the penguin and fish crafters group and get your guys feedback. Like if we need to add anything else or, or what. And then after that, I will, um, Get, get the label printed. Still think that's probably the most permanent and easy way to do it. Just like get a swatch printed from like spoon flower or something and do it that way. Ugh, thread chicken coming on now. I think we'll make it though. kind of big stitches but that's okay and we'll get three more in here Let's get that last little stitcher in there. Thanks, Michelle. I appreciate it. All right. We got his little crown going. Um, all right. I'm going to weave in that end. And uh, this is bothering me. I got to get that guy done tonight yet. So we're going to get that little last, um, last berry done. Too sad leaving him all by himself up there. I think I may have a little, oops, caught some of that purple. I may have a little scrap of that, that California poppy color 
left, that bright orange, so I don't have to start a new thread. I think I'll have just enough for that itty bitty berry. Let's see. Oh gosh, that actually is pretty short. So I have that one. <laughs> I have this one. They're both short. Which one's longer? Okay, this one just barely. So we're going to use this. Um, is there any more of that color in here? Oh, there is, you guys. I was thinking, oh, we're going to be done with that color, but I do still have his eyeballs. Um, that's this this orange, too. So, yeah, I'm going to have to cut more tomorrow anyway. Oh, well. I still think I can get, get um, just this little guy with this, though. I'm going to just weave in right here. Seems like a good spot. Yep. Amy, you're right. California poppies in the eyeballs. I was thinking I was done, but... Ooh, shoot. Caught on my finger there. Ugh, it's that time again. Everything's getting more dry. I, like, it's noticeable. Uh, today was actually what I felt like is the mo first noticeable day of, like, drier, drier air. <laughs> it's been so humid, and now all of a sudden um, it's dry, so my, my thumb just caught on the thread there so we're gonna be lotioning up again a ton soon here I can tell tell already all right let's get this little guy all right I'll get close up for this satin stitch For these circles, I do like starting in the middle. Then I work out one way and then work out the other way. Just filling it in from one side to the other. I'm always starting on like the bottom side and ending at the top side, then coming back to the bottom side. I'm just following that edge. All right, I think this is the last one over here. Let's jump over to the other half. I'm going right next to those last stitches, like just like a, a like teeny fabric thread away from it. Oh, Uli, so Uli's. <laughs> commenting on the the back side of the embroidery so my big secret um is that i weave in the ends on the the when i start a thread and when i end the thread and i have some techniques for that so uh like what i'm doing now i i weave when i'm done i weave into the backs of stitches that are there already uh, three times. So that's that third time that kind of locks it in place. And then I can snip it right almost on top of the thread or on top of the back of the stitch. So there's no extra threads hanging out either. But by weaving in the ends at the beginning too, I sort of reserve a piece of thread and then weave it in after the row, uh, with an away knot. We'll definitely go over that tomorrow, uh, again, probably. And, um, by not having any knots on the back, there's nothing for anything to catch on. And I'm, I'm actively, <laughs> I'm also actively trying not to jump far around. I'm starting a lot of fresh little areas um, new without jumping because I know that the back is going to be seen for this particular piece because it is on a tea towel. Uh, so I, I'm being extra, extra careful, but I do have some some techniques uh, that I use to help to help out and mostly it's just those weaving in the ends so I don't have any any um, any knots on the back but all right we did a pretty good job up there not quite done we got we got this little leaf to go yet and that's gonna be in that that green color that celery color up here uh, but then we have a whole pile of face to do yet we got all the decorative bits of that that like sugar skull face so we'll get there so saturday stitch along tomorrow at 11 a.m central time we will finish this up we will take off the stick and stitch 
stabilizer. That is that sticker that we are using that has our design printed on that I just uh, ran through my laser printer at home here. And uh, we were also going to stitch this feller up as well. Boop, boop, boop. Um, <laughs> so I have the stick and stitch ready for him uh, to stick on our fabric. And uh, I'll show you how to trace it again as well. We'll start that like it's a whole new project. Uh, I, I like tracing with my the water erasable pen here. So I'll show you how to do that again. So tomorrow we will go until this guy's done and then we will stitch up our bat until that guy's done and then take off all of the water soluble stick and stitch. Uh, so a whole pile of stuff. So it'll probably be at least uh, three to four hours tomorrow. <laughs> all right, you guys, I'm gonna flip you around here. Hello. All right. There's one question. Is it okay to run the stick and stitch through inkjet printers too? Yes. So you can run uh, the stick and stitch. So I, I've just been doing it through the laser printer because that's what we got, but it will work through um, a, an inkjet as well. It might bleed a little uh, on the inkjet when you get it wet, but that should all wash away. I think that's it shouldn't be a problem. If you're nervous about it, you could print a little piece and then get it wet, but uh, it should be fine. Uh, so laser or inkjet, it works. And they, they come in packs of 12 and they come the printer size paper, that eight and a half by 11, for US at least, the eight and a half by 11. So you can just feed it right into your printer and it prints right to it. Oh, I love it because you don't have to trace it. You just print it and then you're ready to go right away. Uh, you get to basically skip the whole transferring process by using this, the stick and stitch. So I'm, I'm a fan. <laughs> All right, you guys, there we go. We will finish them up tomorrow. I can't wait. Uh, so thanks again, you guys. Uh, it is still available in the shop and uh, I will see you tomorrow. I can't wait to stitch. Have a good evening. Good night.